Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Nias Berev, and it works. I like maps. <laughs> uh, mostly as a customer, I see tons of maps every day uh, on different websites, different, uh, from different companies. And uh, I am interested not only in what is presented, like what are you doing, like geodata and stuff, but also how it's presented. And as you might have noticed, in the past 20 years, maps have changed. Like at first, it was this strictly professional thing with GIS, with uh, tons of buttons, of layers. So as a, cust uh, as a person, you had to really struggle to understand the maps. But uh, around 15 years ago, everything changed with Google Maps, with all the other stuff. Maps have become accessible. Uh, very few controls, very understandable, just few layers. And you can do what you need on the maps. You can understand the data immediately without having to struggle with the interface. That was 15 years ago, and it feels like nothing has changed since then. Uh, the interface is still the same, but people are also trying to cram as much as possible in web maps, and it feels like we're going backwards. Like, Again, there are tons of layers, tons of controls and stuff. And I really care about map usability. Uh, and I know it doesn't seem right. And it's, it got ridiculous. Like, uh, how do I find uh, a Lidl near me? Uh, it's simple. I will open Maxima website, uh, open the map there. It's got a really nice map. Uh, find my area and yeah, here's Lidl. Uh, and the server, cool. Uh, how did it come to this? It's not like Maxima employees planned to make this data available on the website. Uh, I'm pretty sure there were tasks with a simple task. Please make a map. And what uh, making a map constitute? How, what does it mean for us? Uh, well, I think uh, it mostly means uh, preparing geodata, choosing some colors, and that's it. It putting it into one of the standard mapping libraries. Uh, but the thing with standard mapping libraries is that they come with a lot of opinions, a lot of defaults, like default layer. Uh, Google's default layer allows too much especially for corporate websites, like funding your uh, uh, competition. Uh, and these libraries uh, have opinions about uh, things from large to small, from uh, general interactivity, even about the smallest UI elements that you don't usually think about, you just use them. For example, zoom buttons. Zooming buttons are pretty common. And I, uh, well, I often said that zooming buttons are like the second worst thing <laughs> that come to web cartography after, after layer switchers. Uh, and yeah, the, you might think, why? What's wrong with them? Every map has uh, zooming buttons. Uh, well, it's an interesting thing to uh, start, I'd like to uh, tell a bit of technical uh, things. Uh, so how zooming is done uh, on the web and in mobile? Since maps, maps are very big, uh, there's a tiling scheme. So basically there are multiple zoom levels and a tile on uh, a zoom level is four tiles on the next one. So the map is split and you can switch zoom levels easily. So the thing is, uh, our modern web and mobile cartography is defined not by cartographers, but by technicians. This was very useful and simple to do. But as a result, uh, for every map, we have to design uh, maps for every zoom layer. And every map we see on the web is basically uh, stacked up like 20 different maps with different design, different set of features, different labeling, uh, different purposes. And people really 
struggle to make this. Like uh, I follow the development of OpenStreetMap standard website, and every little change uh, expands into 100 common threads with multiple pictures because everything affects like uh, a dozen layers, a dozen different maps stuck into one, just because they're zooming. <laughs> And do you know that there's like a dozen ways of uh, changing the scale on the map? Like uh, there's uh, zooming buttons, you can pl press plus minus on the keyboard, there's cr scrolling on the mouse, double tapping, uh, pinch zoom, uh, and many other ways. And uh, well, the, at one hand there's good, that's uh, too many, but uh, why don't we have this single way? Uh, and obviously that's because none of the ways to change zoom level are good. And as a technician, I uh, often tempted to invent my own one that will be better than all the others. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, uh, with uh, zooming broken <laughs> and uh, zooming requires too much effort, the uh, question we should be asking is, is it even needed? Can we do away with such an uncomfortable and uh, taxing ele element of uh, interface? For that, we need to go a, a bit back and ask uh, why do we even need to change map scale? Map scale? And for presenting things on the map, it feels pretty obvious uh, to see a, an overview of things and to look at individual things in the context. And from that answer, it feels like you really, really need one, two zoom levels. So the thing is, when we uh, restrict uh, our tasks at that, then the user interface might become simpler. Like uh, when I wrote a blog post about uh, zooming buttons with this fun illustration, uh, I also proposed uh, an option of better UI for zooming. Uh, the idea was taking uh, like the most ideas for modern cartography. This idea was taken from Atlases of Old, uh, in which uh, you see an overview map, but you don't uh, turn the page and see the map is double the scale. It just uh, usually the jump is more uh, uh, noticeable. Uh, usually atlases have just two zoom levels. Uh, so you can uh, open a map, and the thing is, maps are interactive elements. You can tap anywhere on the map, but usually these taps are like uh, missed. They don't mean anything. They can be used for zooming, obviously. You can tap on Tallinn, you can tap on this area, and in just three clicks, three taps, you navigate. Instead of scrolling the map, changing zoom one by one, like fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, tens, and so on. Uh, in three taps, you can get anywhere in Europe. And it's pretty precise. It works like an atlas. Yeah, and taps gets it back. If you have something to show on the map, like shop locations, well, uh, then it become, becomes even simpler. You just click on shops. You don't have to enable interface elements you don't need because they take away uh, from your users. Your users come to your websites not to scroll and pan maps. They come to get answers, to learn something, not to fiddle to, with, with maps. What else can you take from interactive maps? Well, everything. <laughs> Most of the time, uh, maps detract from experience, interactive maps. Because maps, uh, well, first they break user interfaces of websites. Like, uh, did you encounter how you, uh, on a web page, you scroll it and suddenly there's an interactive map in the middle and instead of scrolling, you start zooming in and out of the map. Or uh, in terms of accessibility, maps are insufferable because they cannot be read by screen readers. Labels are always too small. Colors are always washed out. So anything, even simple pictures, would be better than uh, interactive maps because pictures can at least have an alt text explaining what happens on this. But the thing with static maps, 
is that they are much harder to make. Somehow we came to a point when having a complex interactive uh, element as maps on the page is much easier to do than having just a picture of a map. Because when you need to make a picture, you have to be doing proper cartography with choosing proper zoom level, choosing, uh, making proper labeling. You cannot rely on uh, the next zoom level showing labels you don't have. So, so, yeah, and as far as I know, there are no free web services to produce static maps, even default ones, so you will have to do the job like open QGIS or RGS and prepare proper images. And it's hard. It's much simpler to use standard library. So are standard libraries uh, the only answer? Well, of course, no. Sometimes uh, it can be even simpler. Like, you know, these bad infographics, when you look at it and think that, it, well, if they just gave the numbers, it would be much easier to understand. Like, uh, for this COVID infographic, it's so great that all the people sick with COVID are in Eastern Russia and not in capitals and so. If they just uh, had a list with Russia, 400,000 uh, people sick, it would be much simpler to understand. And the same applies to maps. Sometimes you don't need a map, you can... Uh, maps are, of course, important, intermediate, like product of your work. But the result can be just a table or a list. <laughs> it's also viable. I used uh, this idea when making a map editor for OpenStreetMap. And you might think, how do you make a map editor without presenting a map? Uh, well, first, I, I did it uh, eight years ago with level zero. Basically, it presents OpenStreetMap data uh, as a text. You can edit this as a text, uh, but surprisingly, it is full-featured OpenStreetMap editor. You can add restaurants with it. You can draw buildings. It's just a bit harder. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the map there is just for getting coordinates, nothing else. Uh, but now I had a different uh, task. Uh, well, OpenStreetMap is known for lacking points of interest. And uh, I wanted to, for example, go to a mall, shopping center, and quickly add every shop one by one. Uh, there are multiple editors to OpenStreetMap. What they do, they present a map uh, with all the uh, shops on it. Uh, just a moment. Ah not the button, uh, shops on it, and the button for adding new one. But the thing is, quick and interactive maps doesn't mix because of uh, label displacement, icon displacement. You don't see everything. Uh, you have to tap on uh, things to actually get information for that because the map doesn't have enough space. So after being frustrated with uh, all the existing editors, I thought maybe we don't need a map. Maybe this could be done as a list. <laughs> and that's what I released a couple weeks ago. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, thing is, uh, the map, interactive map here is used just to confirm the location because in buildings it's rather hard in uh, location for trades. But generally, the main interface for the map is the list, a list of shops around you. So you stand in a shopping mall, look around, and compare shops you see uh, there with shops you see on the phone. And it, if something is uh, wrong, then uh, there's option to edit it, of course. Uh, but generally, that's it. Uh, so a few weeks ago, or months ago, I, I went to Rock Almara Center and uh, collected or confirmed all 150 shops in a matter of two hours or so, which is quite fast. And subsequent visits will take uh, like half an hour because I, I just have to tap on the check marks like, uh, yeah, confirm, nothing changed, it's there. So, and this, uh, by removing the map as a main interactive element, uh, I sped up collecting data for OpenStreetMap, and with that, uh, well, it could change how OpenStreetMap is approached, uh, how it looks at with regards to points of interest and uh, things. 
So having text, having a list for a main element, it improves things. And maybe it can be applied to other things, uh, to other pre information pre presentations. Uh, map is not always the answer. Sometimes companies spend tons of time to improve the map, to improve filtering. Uh, uh, let's keep this. Uh, but uh, they don't need to do this. Because, for example, for car navigation uh, apps, uh, they always have a map with uh, smart filtering, with route displayed. But a driver cannot afford to lose sight of the road even for a second. So the best map for a driver would look like this. I drive with my phone turned off and rely only on sound, like turn right at the next uh, traffic light or something. Sometimes you don't even need to <laughs> think about the map. You have to think of alternative ways to print information. It all depends on uh, whom are you showing your info to. If you're showing it to another cartographer, then sure, go ahead. Uh, but if you show it to different people, then maybe you don't need all of that. Maybe you don't need uh, to present all the layers, but just to choose or merge them in a way that's understandable. Maybe you don't need to have 20 maps in one uh, and allow for s uh, slower zooming, but you can just choose a scale yourself like cartographers of old did and present the result. Sometimes interactivity breaks the website. It does allow for accessibility, so maybe map images would serve the purpose better. And quite often, actually, we could do away with a map entirely. So at least if you have to have a map, think about tools you are using and uh, try to think of user, uh, how they could make less clicks, less taps, and get uh, the info you want to show them. That's all. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Do we have uh, questions? <laughs> hey, nice presentation. Uh, first you said I love maps and then you turn back on the maps, right? <laughs> so it, maybe it's more like I love lists, lists in the end. <laughs> so, uh, but I really, when I searching for something, I really want to see from the beginning, the globe and then to zoom in because maybe I also love maps, maybe that's why, but it's interesting how you said that for somebody, for some users, that's not interesting, right? So how can you distinguish who is using the map at that moment? Mm -hmm. Well, first, uh, w when you love something, you shouldn't love blindly. You have to know all the drawbacks, all the issues with it. Uh, otherwise, it's not love, it's like religion. Uh, 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 regarding globes, Globes are very interesting. I love to play with globes. When I see a globe on the web page, I scroll it and I see different places, and uh, they're really interesting to play with. But are playing with globes the real purpose of your work? Like, uh, if you want to show where your business resides, do you uh, want to let a person play with a globe instead of just showing where to go? The idea is that you have to remove everything that's not needed for the interaction you intend. And often th that uh, means anything from removing some parts of the map, like fi filtering features you want to present, like uh, your competition, to just removing all the interactivity or even removing maps. Thank you. Uh, we have still time for a question or two. Is there anything? Hi, so when you remove, for example, interactivity or filters that now majority of users have gotten used to due to Google Maps and other similar things, have you faced any user backlash? That you know, you have expectations, but the reality is now different. Yeah, great question about expectations. And uh, 
uh, this is really an issue. Uh, is an issue because for the past 15 years, people have been using maps the same way. All the map libraries, they present it the same way with the same controls. And uh, I myself, uh, when Mapbox announced they can support different projections in their library, I wrote a blog post about the, the people are used to web mercator and they want to understand the projections that element is even interactive. And the same applies to things I showed. Like, uh, I got similar questions for that uh, Atlas website that I, I've shown. I got tons of similar feedback for the editor because people want to make the map bigger because they're used to having maps and editors. Yes, this takes time. Uh, but uh, also this makes users more uh, aware, but you want, don't want to make <laughs> users more aware. Uh, I, I don't know yet. This needs to be tackled. The thing is, nobody has uh, tackled the issue before. Like uh, Everybody is content with defaults. But this makes us less productive. This uh, makes us lose focus on why, what the map is there for. So this needs to be solved. I, I don't know yet how, but it's something for us to think about. Yes, I also was thinking about the same thing, that people kind of like defaults very often uh, when they get used to them. But uh, at the same time, Google Maps and things like that, they were not defaults 20 years mm -hmm. ago. So we got used to them. So maybe we will get well, used to the new systems as well at one point. Well, people are used to defaults. It doesn't mean they like them. Like, uh, I'm used to getting from home to here on two buses. Doesn't mean I like the transfer. <laughs> uh, so, uh, about the list type of uh, shop thing, is that something that I, I can also uh, look from the OpenStreetMap, or is it only like a prototype at the moment? It's not a prototype, it's an editor I published three weeks ago. Uh, it's still in beta testing, but you, you can download it on iPhone and Android uh, phones. Uh, we're currently improving the interface uh, to make it like the ultimate, the best editor <laughs> there is. It will change how we map OpenStreetMap <laughs> and change how people uh, look at OpenStreetMap with regards to features. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's uh, very provocative uh, and, uh, and yes, indeed thought-provoking. But I was wondering, this Zoom, it's uh, still isn't it uh, quite, quite a kind of natural? So, uh, I mean, these different, uh, uh, just like a few Zoom levels or, uh, or scales, it's, it's, it's artificial, it's a selection. But, uh, I mean, let's say drone imaging, uh, we, the drone takes off and, and it, uh, this is, it's, it's more natural to actually be, have this kind of dynamic scale. And in that sense, I, I think that that's probably what also the reason why it seems so obvious and, and easy to use in a way. Well, again, it's about defaults. It's like uh, when you drive in a car, uh, you know, for a long time people dr drove a uh, car with manual stick shift. And you have to s switch uh, gears uh, when you go faster and so on. It felt very natural. Like I don't think about switching uh, gears, I just drive. Uh, really great. But some, then somebody thought, maybe the driver shouldn't be part of the engine. Maybe this somehow can be done automatically. And now we drive on uh, automatic uh, shifts uh, with just uh, two pedals and no sticks, and everybody likes that. So uh, this is about removing things that you, you are accustomed to, but maybe it turns out that it just takes uh, your time to just go through it, uh, even without thinking. Thank you. Yeah, there's one more question. Okay, thank you for the presentation. I have one question. Uh, so, for example, if you go into the inside of the building to basically sort of digitize the stores you have inside, what's the sort of algorithm, how do you put the point where the store is, because I uh, assume inside the mall, the GPS accuracy would be fairly low. Uh, absolutely, I use a map. <laughs> because uh, by, um, I said this, uh, the editor uses a list as a main interface, doesn't mean there are no interactive maps at all. Like there are different modes which still mandate using a map, like uh, using satellite imagery. 
uh, for choosing a place where to put a, a shop, uh, of course you need <laughs> to have a map. It's just not, not at the forefront, not uh, the main element, just something to help. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, yes, I agree with this uh, plus minus sign, but uh, looking at the bigger context, uh, maybe the um, uh, better idea is like, uh, uh, we all know those company homepages where you see that, uh, okay, here's our map and here's our like office, so you can like zoom in, zoom out in there. But actually what's the uh, ex expectation of the client is uh, maybe if I, if I go there, I want to, uh, I don't know, open a ways uh, with that location. I don't, I don't want to uh, look at the address and open ways and type the address in there. Maybe the address is very long and complicated. It will take a long time. Uh, or maybe it's better like uh, some kind of a AI solution that uh, uh, your, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it analyzes your location and uh, it will say like, if you're in a shopping mall, it says like, Okay, this store is next to McDonald's because it's no, it knows that ev everybody lo knows where's the McDonald's and it's much simpler to find it like that, so. Yeah, valid points. It just, you don't need AI for that, it's simple heuristics. Uh, and uh, every website knows your location. That's pretty given to, today, even with all the GPR options turned on. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the point is, uh, you, it's not about some complex AI heuristics things. It's about simpler choices that are made by you. Like uh, all sorts of Omniva websites, they made a choice to present all the Omnivas uh, in the country instead of just the ones around you. So when I open to find nearest uh, post control, I have to click on these uh, grouped uh, markers and uh, zoom in like uh, for several minutes just to see what's around me. It, it, it's all a choice. It do, you don't need complex solutions. You don't need to overthink this from the start. You can just do one simple step. Like imagine yourself as a user, so what do you want to know? <laughs> and start from that. I think the problem is that we don't know the end users, UX, that clients don't know what uh, the user is. It's not problem on the map. If you know the, your end user, uh, you properly build this map. <laughs> yes. Often we don't know our users. No startup knows their users, for example. Uh, but you, you can speak <laughs> to people, <laughs> you know, talking usually solves everything. But yeah, I agree that at first you cannot optimize for somebody you don't know. So maybe this might be not the first thing you start with, you don't prematurely optimize. But there is something you should strive for. You should, uh, every business should strive for knowing their users. And from that you, <laughs> you can work. I think we don't have much time, but I have a counterpoint uh, regarding usability of interactive maps and zoomable maps and so on. I have a six-year-old son, and I gave him like a web map to navigate through the city because we had to go to a uh, dentist. And I said, okay, here is this map, and here is navigation turned on. And he managed it in 20 minutes. I was just walking and said, I don't know where to go, show me. And he was able to do it for, from the first time. But if I gave him a paper map of a city and said, go to the dentist, here's this address, he would not be able to do it. And I think from the usability point of view, Google and all these companies, they, do, they know that the users are not used to paper maps. And that's why they gave them interactive zoomable maps with navigation, because that's what is the easiest for the end users. Not for cartographers, not for specialists, but for end users. But that's just my po point of view. 
Uh, that's a great point. If you gave me a map, I also would behave as your six-year-old son. I just scroll it around and see a lot of things and will know how to get there. Uh, thing is uh, the purpose. If you want to educate a person on using the maps, on knowing the city around your location, then, yeah, you could present different views, different zoom levels, different interaction to help them with that. If uh, the purpose is small, the interaction should be small. If uh, you want to educate, if you want to uh, like make them know uh, like for this location, not only where this located, but also how Las Namia region looks and how to get here, then yeah, interactivity might be the better answer. Yes, thank you very much for an interesting presentation and discussion. Thanks.